How are we gonna do this? We're gonna watch some YouTube, that's how. I was in the middle of cleaning my Harbor Freight gun, and uh, lo and behold, the power just popped. All right, tomorrow. Hey, Fearless Mods fans, what is up? It is Biff, and it's been a while. Let me explain why. So first off, you know we got the Lexus. There's some things we wanna do with it. We got the seatbelts done, it's looking fantastic. However, we had a huge storm back at the beginning of May that dropped some quarter size hail all over this thing. I just got it back this week from getting all those dents repaired. There were like 450 dents across the whole thing and it was all PDR repaired, looks fantastic. Some of the chrome replaced, all back to 100%, looks great. I've also been extremely busy and practically gone the entire month of June. So here we are in July and what are we gonna do to this car? Well, the first thing I wanna do is make some very amazing pop to this thing, like this example that I saw before I ever even bought the car. And thank you to my wife for sending me this photo and saying that would look good with yours. Because that's what we're gonna do. And that will be this episode. So if you wanna see how we tackle this custom job to add some flair to the outside of this car to match the interior, then stay tuned. So the first thing we wanna tackle is taking apart these mirrors here. The top cap is something that we're gonna replace and the chrome part needs to come out so that we can get it ready for paint. All right, so the first thing we got here are some Chinese special carbon fiber caps. They actually have a really nice looking weave with some cool little uh, contour on the top. This one has just a slight imperfection in the uh, epoxy coat. Other than that, they look really nice. The clip eh, might leave a little to be desired right here. Uh, it looks to be a little bit flattened down, so we might have to deal with that a little bit. But other than that, everything is like, looks like it should work pretty well. They actually overhang a little bit towards the inside of the car, so in the end, it will look something like this. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to rotate this mirror completely up. We've got this rotated up so that we can kind of get our fingers underneath here and start to pry a little bit and get that that's at least one or two, feels like two that have popped out. The left one and the top one. So you see here, you got the, the four tabs that connect to these four points right here. And we popped it off without um, damaging the mirror or anything like that. Right here, you can see this one screw right here. That's that one screw we're talking about. So let me get the Phillips head screwdriver. Now this top should just come forward and off. Let's see what we got here. That's forward. Let's see if this one will let go too. Oh, we just rotate it off of there. So there we go. On that other one, I'll just need to make sure that these tabs are all pointing in the right direction. These are obviously in better shape. Um, and that way we'll know that they will engage whenever I pop them on. Everything's looking pretty similar, just this guy is really pushed down right here. He's got a little bit of melty action right here that looks like got him pushed down. It looks like it might come up a little. I don't know if it'll come up as much as this other one did. That might be a problem. So you've got these slots right here that those will go into. There's the screw hole and it looks like as long as we can get into those slots with these tabs, it will be good. It'll be probably hard to get that first one to go in because it's the bent one. Well, there it is. That's what it looks like when you put it on and we got everything lined up, so that's good. And it's secure, so once we put that screw in, it'll be good to go. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and take it back off now, gently rock it that way. So. Uh, at least we know that this one is going to work. Um, the other one is in better shape than this. So now let's go ahead and move on to how are we gonna get this chrome piece out so that we can get this painted. I'm gonna go ahead and take these lower screws out and see if that's what it takes. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off this little connector here because he's attached to the front. Okay, there we go. I got that front piece to pop loose on the outside. 
Okay, so the whole front is loose. So I'm gonna slide that over the mirror, let the mirror dangle, and just pull this out of the way. We got one more screw right there that we're gonna pull off. That should release our entire front piece. Uh, oh, that's only for the camera. Since this is all attached to the lane keeping, I don't want to disconnect it and deal with any calibration issues. So I'm going to see if we can just pop this out like this, hopefully. And it looks like we will. So there we go. Okay, so we've got our outer cover here and we want to be able to paint it. And so, but we only want to paint this accent point right here. So rather than trying to tape it in and make it look like crap, I'd la rather remove the entire chrome piece so that we can sand it appropriately, prep it, and paint it so it looks professional. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this blinker off if I can with this one screw. It's the only one I see right now. The bottom part looks like it wants to come off. Yeah, the bottom part popped. Oh, there we go. Got it to pop. All right, so I just did that by taking out that one screw and then prying on the outside here to try to get this to pop loose. And then our blinker came off. Got a couple retainers here, you can see. How about a plastic tool here? There we go, and that just popped loose right there. And we now have our left chrome piece that we can sand and prep and paint. Um, I'll go ahead and do the right side off camera so that we have the two of those out here and ready. Okay, and of course that one went much quicker now that we know how to do it. Um, there are a couple things that we didn't need to do. I didn't really need to pull the whole front ring off when I, where I fished the mirror through and, and left it hanging. So um, on this side it went a little bit quicker just because I knew those things and knew which way to you know, handle all the clips. So we got both of these off. Next thing we're gonna do, because the next thing on our list of painting is the accents on that front lower bumper. So I'm gonna to have to see if I can remove that trim piece, which essentially is hopefully only on the outside, and we'll try to figure out those clips as well so we can prep that. Okay, so I've done a little bit of investigative work here, and I think um, there's a couple access points down here I'm gonna check into with maybe some 10 millimeter bolts in there. I'm probably gonna to have to turn the wheel to the right on this side so I can see what's connected back here at the back, but it looks like this piece should come off from underneath and then hopefully just some clips here. Um, but worst case, we gotta pull that fender liner back a little bit and see if there's any other attach points in here. I'll show you all this when I'm done, but it turns out this thing goes in sideways and I'm trying to pinch this down and slide it out sideways so I can release the, the holder. Fun. So we're taking out part of the fender liner here because apparently there's more of those clips around the bottom of this than, than we thought. So figure if we can take out part of the fender liner and peel it back, maybe it'll reveal a little bit of more of what we need to do to get this thing off. Hopefully it's not pull the bumper. All right, I think we're just gonna investigate pulling this bumper back so we can actually get in there and take a look. This is proving to be too much work uh, without enough guarantees that we're not gonna break some plastic bits under here. So I just wanna get a little more room to work. I'm going to see about removing some of these trims up front here. So these are kinda cool. You don't have to pop these up to get them to release, which is a good thing because because they are just flush as can be with no access spot to get a pick in there. But if you just push them down slightly like this one, they come right out when you get under here. Very cool. Now we can access some of these clips and bolts here. The only other thing we're gonna have to do is probably gonna have to pull the front wheels so that we can get those fender liners clear out and make sure there's no hidden bolts or anything there. But um, two clips up here, two 10 millimeters. The front end of this should be loose with the exception of the headlight and then fender liners so we can get access from there. This one was right here at the back of the side having the fender liner out. Uh, helped us out there. Let's see if there's any others we can get. I see some. 
Oh yeah, they're stacked up all around that thing on the inside. So what you can see here is these tabs that kind of work their way all the way up. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these screws out um, down here so that I can free this up and see if there are any more clips along the bottom. There we go. And we got a clip right there we need to get out. There we go. So one screw up at the top up there behind this tank at the top of this vent, three of those plastic things. So we're gonna go for that guy. I'm thinking I will try to grab it with my long reach needle nose from the top like that, and then use the long reach screwdriver to push in the tab at the bottom, like that, and then let's see if we can pull that out. Like that. So yes, this is going to be easier than it was with the fender liner in. Oh, there we go. One-handed with the screwdriver. And we are out. Now we got these clips. We gotta push all this stuff, and release it. And that screw at the top, that's gonna be fun. Let's see about this instead. Trying to make more room somewhere. Yes, there we go. Access to the screw. All right, I'm gonna try my short stubby Phillips right there. The one last one way over here. There we go. We got the piece off. You can see how these little things are such a pain in the butt. I don't know why they made them look like they were flappers that you could just like pry down. So I ripped this one. This one's just freaking massive um, but we got it one two three four five six of those plastic clips I will go ahead and pull the other one off off camera you already saw me struggle enough Okay, so now that we've got these taped off and sanded, where we will do the red and then the clear coat, uh, we've got these all sanded, they don't need any tape on them. I'm gonna go ahead and wax and grease remove them one time, get them once over, and then I'm gonna be ready to spray them with some adhesion promoter. Um, and I'm gonna let that dry for a while on these because I want to be able to apply some tape over that so that I can put the red on and then pull that tape off wax and grease remove, tack cloth, and hit it again with some uh, clear coat. So for now, wax and grease remover it is, and adhesion promoter. We've got the adhesion promoter on there. I'm now gonna go ahead and tape up the areas that uh, I don't want red. All right, so another time with the cheesecloth. Make sure we got all the dust off of here, and then we'll be ready to start spraying some red. We've got two coats of base coat down on these parts. The mirror pieces that were chrome underneath, they look fantastic. They're ready for clear coat uh, with two base coats. Um, the black pieces of plastic still need a, another coat. I think one more base coat is going to get us the rest of the coverage. And then we'll be ready to pull the tape back and wax and grease remove, make sure our new tape lines are still good to go. And then clear coat all of these parts. I think we're base coat complete. We'll let these babies set a minute while I mix them clear. 
Okay, not what you want to have happen, but uh, we had some huge storms last night that knocked power out for us for about seven hours. Uh, came on this morning at 4.30. It's been working in here all day until just now. I was in the middle of cleaning my Harbor Freight gun and uh, lo and behold, the power just popped. So I'm gonna keep cleaning. Um, I got some light here that I can use uh, cordless that I might try to go ahead and use to you know, get some of the tape pulled back here after I'm done cleaning the gun. Um, and then we can wait for the power to come on to uh, prep the clear because I'm gonna be using air pressure a little bit to clean this stuff and my compressor is gonna be draining on the air and it won't have enough in the tank if I don't have power to, uh, to go ahead and spray the clear coat. So anyway, I'll keep cleaning and uh, I'll keep you updated. I know this is harsh light, but it's the only light I've got. The power has not come back on. I am ready. Uh, went home, the power had gone out there, and just before I got our generator ready to plug in with all the cords and stuff I had to bring from here, I drove home and right when I got there, the garage light turned on as I pulled in the driveway. So anyway, I'm back here. Uh, I don't want to give this the 24 hours that would then require me to resand the red. Um, so, uh, but it is hot and humid in here now. I don't have the AC running, I have no air circulation. Um, but I'm going to put some clear coat down. I still have about 120 PSI on the uh, air compressor. I've got it regulated down to about 40. And then on the gun, I'm at about 2 bar or 29 PSI. So, um, pretty happy so far with that Harbor Freight. Um, cheap, cheap gun, man. I don't know what that thing is, 12 bucks or so. Um, I've had it for a while, first time I used it, small job, figured I'd give it a try. And um, anyway, let's throw some clear coat down on these things and see if we can get this done so that this can set up in this uh, oven in here. Before I do that, let's do a little wax and grease remover since this has been sitting here and I've been handling it a little bit and then we'll do the tech cloth and then we will move on. Getting just a little bit of the red on there, but not that bad. I'm just giving it a nice, gentle little wipe. Um, really want to make sure I get this more than anything. Oh, don't react with that. Just don't. Oh, it's reacting with that. Shoot, don't do that. That could be tape residue. You just don't even know. Yeah, that feels worse than that. that feels Let's let that dry and see what happens there. I think I like that better. I might have just taken my adhesion promoter off, but I did get rid of the gumminess on there that was probably from the tape. I think I'll be happy I did that. That looks much better. We'll let that dry, and then we'll hit it with the tack cloth, and then we'll be ready. Okay, so it keeps getting worse. Now my light that I was using to light this side is dead. So I'm gonna have to hold that light while I put the second coat of clear coat on. I think we're gonna say that uh, we have completed the color transformation of these four components. I'm gonna let them dry while I go get some oxygen. And uh, hopefully tomorrow, We'll have power back and some dry parts and we can put this back together. That's a lot of clear coat that I've got to throw away and um, that sucks. So four to one I mixed it, so I had it up to the essentially the number five. I used 20% of that. The rest gets thrown out. Bummer. The nice thing is these Harbor Freight sleeves with caps, I just pulled that out of my canister and throw that out. Man, what a nice addition. And thunder and lightning. All right, tomorrow. All right guys, here we are. It is the next day and um, we've got power back on. So that's a, that's a plus. Um, looking at this stuff for the first time and I've got to say, we're looking pretty good. Um, pretty heavy on the orange peel, but that's okay. I don't mind for that little trim piece that's going in there. Um, this one maybe looks a little bit better. 
But uh, yeah, that one's a little bit better. But um, anyway, those look fantastic. They dried up nice. Let's take a look at these guys here. We gotta get this tape off of them. All right, and there we have it. I think these things turned out pretty damn good. Um, so we're gonna have beautiful accents on here. You can maybe see some of the orange peel on there compared to the no orange peel on the top. Um, I think those look great. I think I picked a good spot to run that line so that the entire insert is, um, you know, like plastics and that this whole piece here appears to be painted. I think it will be fine up against the bumper, to be honest with you. I think the lines we picked are perfect and the mirrors as well are gonna just give it that pop that we want that we saw in the original picture. So um, I'm ready to go ahead and clear up this space just a little bit, get the car in here and start putting this back together. All right guys, so there you have it. We have completed this job on the Lexus. And I gotta say, the accents look fantastic. Um, really like how the red pops with the red interior. Now we got the seat belts in the interior. In the next episode, we will be taking off these calipers and turning them the same beautiful red color so that we can complete this transformation on the outside. So guys, that's gonna be a wrap. If you enjoyed this episode of Fearless Mods, please reach down there and like and subscribe and keep coming back for more content. But we'll catch you next time. Take care.